Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 18 of Project Ozone 3. I am making some pulsating iron right now, and also some, uh, wait, ender ingots can't go into the smeltery? Ah, oh, that's terrible. Well, I was attempting to make some coolant for today's episode, but it seems that that's a bust, so. On to what we did in between episodes. The first thing we did was we started construction on the other side of the factory. So we have a main portion right here, and we have a uh, almost exact replica of this part of the factory on the other side. Uh, obviously it's not finished because the sheer amount of basalt that this build requires is, uh, is absolutely insane. I think I have 57 basalt blocks left. So I need to make another trip into the nether. I also learned that there is a bug with the uh, furnace overhaul furnaces. So I have this fiery nether rack, which means when I put it in this furnace, what I should be getting, and just to verify, yeah, there's no fiery nether bricks in here. So I'm gonna put in one fiery, and I'm getting regular nether bricks which is terrible. But if I remove the ore processing upgrade and put the fiery nether brick back in, I get a fiery nether brick. So that is absolutely unfortunate. I think I smelted up maybe three stacks of fiery nether rack before realizing it wasn't actually making me fiery nether, nether bricks. And yeah, it was, it was a bad day all around. So that is a little glitch that's happening and uh, I need to report that. I have it written down on my new pad. Um, I also upgraded every single one of my dank nulls to uh, emerald level. So I have my nether ore, my sieve, my dimension ores, which I've already had. I turned the red boss drop dank null into the emerald level, and I made a new one that I haven't named yet, but I'm storing all of my Pam's uh, vegetables and fruits in there. I also made these. I made 10, 10, 10 Gilorium seeds. And once again, if what I was doing when I first hit the record button is any indication, I'm getting into extreme reactors this episode. So I already have 64 Yellorium blocks, and more on the way. But yeah, making Yellorium blocks, so I have those Yellorium seeds at 10, 10, 10. So I completed the Superium, cra the Superium crafting seed and the Supremium crafting seed in order to get that to what? Why is Jade complete? I've never done Jade. What is Jade even for? Alright, let's look up what Jade's for. Jade Essence gives me Erebus Jade. Oh. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh well. We'll uh, jump that hurdle when we get to it. But yeah, 10, 10, 10 Yalorian Seeds. I broke a little bit into RF tools in between episodes because I wanted to take this wall, which is a very difficult wall, and transfer it over there before realizing I can't do that because this wall is facing left and I would be needing it to face right. And since I, since I made these angles, I can't just flip the wall and ask it to install. But the space chamber is really easy to make. Um, the recipe has been changed for Project Dozone, so it requires hard carbon from nuclear craft and morganine from land craft in order to make the machine frames. But after you have the machine frames, the recipe is essentially, essentially the same. After you put your eight corners together, and you do need eight of these to make a space chamber, then you take a smart wrench from RF Tools, right click the controller block, so it's seven corner blocks and one controller block. Right click it and it says a chamber successfully created. After that, in an RF Tools Builder, you need to create a space chamber card. The space chamber card is two bricks, two redstone, and iron ingot. Easy stuff. But once you have the space chamber card, you right click on the space chamber control block after it has created a structure and it says the card is now set to channel one. You can also change what channel you want it to be, but when you pop that in there, and you'll see that it recognizes the chamber that you used, and it'll make a little, uh, if you press the support preview mode enabled, 
then it'll create a little preview of what's going to be built. If this was supplied with power, I'd just have to put a chest on top and throw in all of the materials that go into this. So this gloomy netherrack, basalt bricks, all that good stuff. And uh, it would start placing those blocks. But that is, uh, obviously it was a failed experiment because I didn't take orientation into account. But I still have those up there and I may use them a little bit later. But hey, I have created the builder. I have powered up the stellar armor. Uh, all pieces are at empowered five, which uh, it's really no problem. The biggest, the biggest thing that uh, it took were the octatic capacitors, but making tormented enderman head, which is what required uh, for empowered five, that was no issue. Uh, padding is wool, sound locator. Um, actually, I don't really have sound locator on, but I have a keybind to H. And whenever a sound happens, you'll see a little uh, a little note appear. And it's super handy because I also have uh, padding on, which muffles sounds around me. So even though the sounds are muffled, I can still see where sounds are coming from. Um, this uh, leggings have empowered five, and actually, yeah, that's it. The stellar chest plate empowered five. And the boots have jump and flippers, which means if I was in water, I would uh, move perfectly fine. And I have jump, so hit J. I jump higher. Oh yeah, see that note pat that note that just appeared. Awesome. But because of jump, I uh, jump higher, and because of empowered, I don't take fall damage if I didn't already have flight in the first place. So yeah, my stellar armor has been upgraded for now. Once I have potions with the help of the thermal foundation and thermal dynamics blocks, I'll uh, get swiftness and all that stuff put onto it. So Matt Claw and uh, Elysium brought up that uh, disabling the biotite may not be in my best interest uh, because it's required for extended crafting. And I recognized that as I was uh, recording the episode, but if you look, there are biotite seeds. So I hate how ugly the nether looks with biotite because every time you like I said last episode every time you kill the ender dragon more biotite appears and I've been on a server where somebody didn't recognize that and most of the end on the initial end platform had been replaced with biotite it was terrible to look at so I have disabled that and I'm going to rely on the ender biotite seeds in order to get around that Robert Pickles said that I should be keeping my charms uh, I shouldn't throw them away, and I agree with them. I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, doing things... Uh, I was being fair with all things since no one, since nothing's available. Another thing he brought up is the ability totems. Uh, don't drop from mobs anymore. In order to get the ability totems, it's on the rewards page. So all ability totems are now rewards. So I'm going to keep... He said, if I get rid of my charm belt... It would stand to reason I'd have to get rid of the ability totems, and he's absolutely right. So, uh, thank you, Robert, for that information, and yeah, I'm gonna keep my charm belt for now. All right, so I am gonna make my uh, I'm gonna make my cooling fluid for my hello. Stabilized redstone, liquid chocolate. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Looks like I'm not going to be making fluid. I was going to use Resonant Ender, which is what I was attempting to uh, make at the beginning of the episode. But I have a Gelid Cryothium cow. So, I'm going to be using Gelid Cryothium. But now that I have a Gelid Cryothium cow, uh, that's what I'm going to be using to cool my extreme reactors. Um, if nothing has changed with it, then that means that Gelid Cryothium is still the best coolant you can have. So I'm going to make a small reactor, fill it with some gelid cryothium, and uh, I'll get back with you once I have all of that stuff crafted up. Another thing I had to do was I made some graphite seeds, and uh, graphite is really easy. You just throw a piece of, uh, throw a piece of coal or charcoal into a uh, furnace or any other type of furnace, and bam, you get graphite ingots. So that was easy enough. I made some graphite essence and made a bunch of graphite bars. So we can get started with the extreme reactor stuff. The first thing that we're gonna wanna make is this reactor casing core. And uh, 
Reactor casing core is graphite bars, iron, gold, and redstone. I'm going to make 64 of them. Throw those in there. And when you have those cores, you can make... I'm not going to make 64 reactor casings. Or use all 64 of my stacks of stuff. Uh, I'm going to make two stacks of the reactor casings. Actually, you know what? To be on the safe side, I will make two and a half stacks. And I'm also going to be making this reactor glass legacy. I'll be making eight of those. After you make those, make the reactor controller. Oh, I have not made my comparator yet. Reactor controller, a two reactor legacy ports, and where are you? The reactor redstone flux power tab. Boom. So now I have two stacks plus a little bit more, and I'm ready to create the uh, the shell of my reactor. I'm making a uh, six by six reactor floor. And I think I'm going to go up five high. Yeah, about to the ceiling. I am right behind all of my immersive engineering stuff. And this is just going to be my uh, this is going to be my first reactor that I ever make. And my final reactor is actually going to be much larger than this. Uh, I'm going to build this up one, two, three, four, five. Actually, yeah, five will do. These reactor uh, access ports are where you're going to input and output your fuel. And uh, I forget what comes out. It's cyanite? Yeah, it's cyanite. So these are dual purpose. All you need to do is just choose what mode you want it to be. So this is automatically an input port. And then right over here you hit output and it becomes blue. Also going to put down my controller. right here and the tap right here and there's a reason I'm gonna put the tap right there I'll go over after this thing is built alright so I have the shell made and you see that I've left the top open because I still need to make my reactor rods and the control rods so I'm gonna go make those and then place them down I'm actually gonna need a hole to get in there anyway so and I'm going to place them down I will be making one two three four five six seven eight so I was mistaken. Uh, I don't need eight uh, reactor control. I only need four. So one, two, three, four. Awesome. And I'm also going to make reactor fuel rods. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And head back onto the reactor. Take this Yalorium with me. Now since this is a five high. That means each of my control rods will be four high, so I can leave room for the control to go on top. What the control is going to do for you is allow you to uh, change. Here we are. It's going to allow you to change how inserted your rods are. And uh, once this is complete and I can show you what that looks like, I will show you what that looks like. And it looks like I was short with reactor casings as well. So I should have made three stacks to begin with. Whoops. Yeah, I was short to begin with. Okay. Well, I just messed something up. <laughs> so I am having an issue. Every time I try to uh, fix my mistake and I took away this brick uh, whenever I try to replace that brick, it is not liking me. So I'm just going to uh, clear this hole. There we are. Oh, man. All right, so whenever you, for some odd reason, and I hate that the dark armor or the stellar armor in this case does this, but whenever you load a new iteration of the pack, whenever you reload the pack, for some odd reason, the jump on your uh, Ender, IO, Ender IO armor resets. So you actually have to disable it again, otherwise um, you'll waste energy. Every time you use that ability, it uses energy that is on the, uh, 
the RF that is stored in the boots. So if you don't need it, disable it. Oh, okay, so it isn't extreme reactors, it's the dank null. The dank null is having trouble placing blocks. I want to know why. Well, time to reload the pack again. Oh, that'll do it. So I was actually... Let's see, alt-click. I was trying to place a slab instead of a brick. Yeah, okay, it works now. All right, cool. That was annoying, but <laughs> whatever. Back on to business. So now that I have this frame, it's time for me to add my, uh, I'm gonna add my cryothium. So lucky for me, oh man, jump disabled. <laughs> 34 buckets. All right, that's not enough, but oh, it might be enough. But got my cryothium, gonna need a bucket. So since this reactor is not very big, I don't really have to worry about, uh, I don't have to worry about a lot. So I want to place the cryothium right here because I'm still gonna fill in everything around. So, oh man, I forgot. Pyrothium has gravity effects. So as I'm placing this cryothium, you're gonna notice that I am not going to put any in here because quite frankly, it's a waste. The only, uh, in regards to coolant with extreme reactors, the rods only care about the coolant that is next to them. So, which means this corner has no bearing on the actual cooling of the reactor itself. So I'm going to leave it. One more. Cool. How many more? Oh, actually, wow, I'm doing really well. I think I'm gonna have just enough. Oh, I had just enough. That was my last bucket, and I have everything filled up to the brim with the exception of the corners. That is wonderful. So I'm going to put my reactor casings back and you're gonna notice because the cryothium is right there I'm gonna be generating snow on top of this thing which is whatever it's not gonna generate on top of the uh, control rods which is what I'm happy about but if you noticed now that I just completed the reactor this became a full multi-block structure and we got some semi connected textures in place so let's head down beauty. So right now there is no fuel in here, so I am going to put some fuel in. Wow, it just took all of that, like immediately. <laughs> so now, oh man, I wish I hadn't uh, put the gelid in there first, but now that there's fuel there, if I was able to look at the fuel rods, you'll see that they were yellow instead of clear because they're full of fuel. And I'm going to take this out and I'm going to replace it with these blocks. For now and I'm gonna have this auto ejecting the waste so let's turn this puppy on and see what we do oh wow I am generating 67 68 Wow so about 68,500 RF per tick on this thing and it is using about one millibucket per tick. But I don't need that much, so as I was discussing before, with the fuel rods, all you have to do is have an empty hand, shift, or just right click the uh, control rod, and you can lower the rods. So I am going to shift, click and make all of this 100% and we're going to go view what that does to the reactor so hmm actually not a lot of change except hang on wow we're like barely using any buckets <laughs> Oh, sorry, control, change all rods. So right now I have all rods at 100%. I made a mistake. 
So if all rods are at inserted at 100%, doing about 43. Hmm. I'm going to put them at about 90. Just because, yeah, 0.1 millibucket per tick. Generating 12,000. Oh, it looks like it's going to be about 10,000 per tick. But I don't really need that much uh, power right now. So having the rods at 90% insertion means they're going to be generating a decent amount of power. Don't have to worry about it expending all that much. I am going to uh, make sure that I can eject this cyanite because I have one cyanite ingot in the uh, output port. And uh, that is actually directly connected to what we're going to do next with uh, ectoplasm. So I have just put a flat transfer node and a barrel so that cyanite ingots are going to go in here. Now, I don't think I showed this when I made the mob farm, but I'm going to use this barrel hammer and I'm going to turn this uh, turn this barrel into like a cover. So it's still a barrel, it still holds everything it's supposed to. It just looks flat and it looks, uh, it looks nice. Then I'm going to choose, uh, man, it doesn't look like I can, I don't want to change it to something molten, so. Um, you know, I'll just make it look like a block of quartz. So, boom. That is wonderful. And I may put another barrel here that I uh, just load a bunch of uh, Eulorium into. Make that iron tier. And I maybe should void it as well. But for now, it'll hold quite a few cyanite ingots. And I'm not even close to generating that many. And on to the next part. So I have had this Spectre Sapling growing for quite a while, and uh, oh man, I'm almost full of the Spectre wood, I like it. So I'm going to take, uh, you know what, I'm going to take seven stacks of uh, Ectoplasm, even though I don't need to. Just a very weird choice by my part, and I'm going to make these Spectre Ingots. Alright, so now that I have Spectre Ingots, and oh, they're, oh, they're translucent, I really like that. And now that I have these Spectre Ingots, what I'm going to do is uh, make this Spectre Lens. So, just going to get some uh, Diamonds, Emerald, and some Glass. And with this Spectre Lens, all I have to do is combine it with a Beacon. Alright, so combine the Beacon, Obsidian, the Spectre Lens. Oh, and the Spectre Lens by itself, uh, what it does is you can attach it to a Beacon, and any ability that you... Any ability that you choose from the beacon will be available to you, the player, dimension-wide. So it doesn't matter how far away from the beacon you are, you will always have uh, haste to or jump, whatever the heck uh, you chose on the beacon. So it's very handy in vanilla worlds, but I am combining it to make the Spectre Energy eject Injector. What the Spectre Energy Injector is going to do for me is I'm going to attach it to my... Uh, Whoop. I'm going to attach it to my reactor and then it will start transmitting yeah there we go it has 100 correction 1 million forge energy just going out wherever so anytime I attach a specter coil which is the next thing I'm going to be making to any piece of machinery then that means that because of that energy injector it'll just always be receiving power wirelessly so let's show that in action so I just attached a redstone specter coil to my reinforced energy input hatch for modular machinery and it is receiving power and it is processing things even though yeah this is empty so thanks to that redstone coil energy is always leaving my reactor and going straight to the reinforced input so I no longer have to worry about wiring everything up and I can have my uh, auto sieve and my distillery running at all times which was the point of uh which was the point of this episode Ooh, four cyanide ingots so yeah the specter energy injector now that i'm actively using the specter energy injector and the specter coils i uh want to do a brief explanation of what exactly they are so say there was another person in this world with me 
because I place down this Spectre Energy Injector, then that means it is bound to me. Each player on a server has a uh, Spectre Energy Buffer, which is what Random Things calls it. Uh, and that energy buffer is specific to a person. And it doesn't matter where you are. Um, let's see. All right, this is not powered and never has been powered. So I just went into the Nether, a completely separate dimension, and I'm going to place this Spectre coil right here. And you'll see that it is gaining energy. That's because my Spectre energy buffer in the overworld is still being used by me. It doesn't matter what dimension I'm in, the coils can receive the energy from that injector and put it into anything, anywhere, any dimension. However, if uh, another person on this server had uh, the Spectre coil and placed it here, but didn't have the injector uh, attached to the extreme reactor, then it wouldn't work for them. Another thing, make sure that you break these Spectre coils with a pickaxe. If you try to break them with the hand, you'll lose them forever. So, yeah, always use a pickaxe to break the Spectre coils. But that is how Spectre energy works. And, uh, yeah, it's one of the primary ways that I'll be using power from now on, other than the uh, dimensional transceiver, if I need to transfer items as well. But with that, I think I'm going to call this an episode. In between episodes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this side of the factory and uh, get it all connected up and looking pretty. And I'm also going to make the RF Tools Modular Storage Unit and to set it up in the nether to continuously collect basalt and uh, fiery netherrack for me. So since I have this redstone spectre coil, I am uh, just going to attach it to the builder. The builder is going to get all that stuff in the nether for me and move it into the modular storage unit so I have constant access to it. Um, Actually, I may put the modular storage in the base and just use a dimensional transceiver instead to move everything. Who knows? We'll jump that hurdle when we get to it. But those are the two things I'm going to be doing in between episodes. Uh, what we're going to be doing next episode is right here, we are going to be hooking up everything for, um, for our ME system. We're finally going to be getting into applied energistics on episode 19, which... <laughs> It's like 16 episodes too late. Regardless, I, uh, I am Kelly Engineering, and I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.